Adam and said, Adam, where are you? Now, anytime God asks you a question like that is rhetorical because he already knows. <laughs> just, just, you know, if you think you're having a conversation with God and you're giving him revelation about who you are, then it does not work that way. See, what we have to remember is that the male did not choose his purpose. God did, and whatever your purpose is, that's where your position comes from. So the first person that he went to was Adam. Now, remember that scripture I read in Hebrews that everyone's going to have to give an account? I'm going to have to give an account for the way I behave towards this woman. I'm going to have to give an account on how I behave toward my two boys. I'm going to have to give an account on how I behave toward my family in general. Carlos Reyes stands before God. That's why I need the high priest. Okay? So, now, <clears throat> let's, let's, let's move on for the sake of time. See, <clears throat> anytime our leadership is not obvious enough to those around us that it requires an explanation, we're in danger of losing it. If you must continually remind people that you are in charge, <laughs> someone else is likely assuming that role. I mean, leadership should appear natural and be evident to all. In, in other words, when anybody comes to my house, I'm the leader. Okay? No, no, no. That's the way it is. This is not being a male chauvinist pig. This is being godly. Anybody that comes to my house has to deal with me. And I'm with my wife. As a matter of fact, one time, this is very simple. Um, I don't know what happened. The garbage man did something or she did something. No, no, no. I know what it was. We were living in an apartment. And, and my wife, you know, we like to eat rice. How many here like rice? <laughs> now, nah, this is a problem, though. See, don't put rice down uh, disposal, garbage disposal. It clogs it up. So she was doing that. And so the guy came to fix it, and he's getting all like that with her. I stepped in and said, excuse me? <laughs> now, she's wrong, but you don't talk to her like that. You want to tell me something? You understand? I'm standing in line, and I'm enjoying my time with my wife, my grandchildren, and some knuckleheads are doing something. I step up to the plate. I don't start going, oh, Rabbi, she's not a I'm being sorry, I'm being sorry. If the male becomes a true visionary and leader, it will be a thing of harmony and success. And so then the, the next one I want to just hit on is teacher. Teacher is very interesting. See, in the garden, Adam was first told not to eat of the tree in the middle of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He told it to Adam so that then he can share it with Eve and teach her what God said. Now, Adam was given the role of teacher not because he was the smartest, because he wasn't, or we would still be there. But because he was the first to be told. Gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that you need to be a student of the word of God. Now, however way you study is the way you study. You don't have to be like me, but... I must tell you that if you're going to be a successful father, if you're going to be a successful husband, if you're going to be a successful courter, you need to know the word of God. And I'm not talking about, you know, chapter and verse. You need to know the word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. risen, resurrected, your Savior and mine. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. See, sometimes we get hung up. Oh, I don't like to read. That's all right. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, all of a sudden something comes up on you. And you begin to behave. You begin to act a different way. You know that God has what? Impregnated each of us with the word of God. Sometimes we know the word of God without knowing chapter and verse. We just know it's the right thing to do. I know men out there who are not saved who are living more godly than men that say they are saved. So Adam here was given the role of teacher. Now, God never told Eve what to do or what not to do. So when, 
Satan tempted her, she responded with her teacher, what the teacher had told her, and so Adam had done his job to inform and teach Eve. So the male was created to be the spiritual leader and teacher of his family. The Bible says that if a wife has a question, as I said earlier, about a spiritual matter during church, she should ask her husband about it when she gets home. Don't stand in line. See, the male is supposed to know the word of God. Yet, most females know more of the word than the men. You know, I, I do marriage counseling. It's amazing. So I sit there, and here's the husband and the wife. And the wife is just cutting him up with the word. And the man's standing there, and I'm in my mind going, dude, you're getting sliced up. <laughs> and you, you're not coming back with anything. So... <laughs> So you know what I have to do? I have to actually tell her to put down the sword. See, because when a female does that to a man, see, I, I may not get to this part, but a male has an ego. Look at that. Talk about the ego. Where, where's mine? There it is. This morning I got this. Best husband ever. She was stroking that ego. <laughs> I got to remember what I'm doing preaching. That's right. See, too often fathers leave their, this responsibility of teaching the word of God to their mothers, to the mothers of their children, and it becomes especially difficult for mothers when their child reaches a certain age in which they did not, do not want to submit to authority. Again, I go back to my life and my two boys. I mean, you know, uh, especially my oldest. He's a big guy. I mean, he's big. I mean, he'll mess her up. But I taught them from an early age how to behave with the women. I taught them from an early age that I'm the leader. You go over there. See, when they want to run something by me, they go to the mom first because the mom is going to nurture is going to understand, is going to do all that kind of stuff. When they come to me, they better have their ducks in a row. Oh, yeah, because I'm going to ask very specific questions, very pointed questions. I'm not going to sit there and kumbaya. She does that. She kumbayas them. By the time they come to me, I know they've talked to her, and so they have their ducks in a row, and we get down to business. I don't know about how it is, but, you know, men are of very few words. And I am one of those men. Now, a lot of people think I'm very, uh, you know, I'm outgoing. And my wife will tell you I'm not. Uh, when I get off the stage, I go, whew. I go back into my world, man. <laughs> this is really God thing. So a teacher is very important. A teacher is always going to tell you how to do something. Have you ever seen men? You know, if you're having problems with the car, they don't know anything about a car. Yeah. And they'll come and go. Yeah. <laughs> Have you tried? Yeah, you see that? Or you're trying to fix something, and a man shows up like your father or something, and they don't know anything about carpentry. And they start telling you how to do it. That's how we've been wired. See, so my sons, when they come to me, they know they're going to get an answer. Even if it's the wrong answer, they're going to get an answer. <laughs> but see, since I'm submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, I know when to say I'm wrong. See, there's guys that won't admit that they're wrong. No, I'll admit that I'm wrong, right? Okay. <laughs> So, <clears throat> I'm going to go through a couple of things to be a teacher. Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 9, there's uh, five instructed tips that we see for how a man is supposed to teach their children. And, and I'm not going to read the scripture. You can read it on your own. And the first one is you need to talk about them when you sit at home. See, when your conversation 
is uh, going on at home. It always is about sports, all kinds of things. And what I do with my boys is that I integrated sports, I integrated the current events, but I always factored in the Word of God. I learned that I could speak the Word of God without chapter and verse. I never had a devotion with my children, but I had a devotion all the time. Anytime I was with my child, it was a devotional time. Why do you have to just set a sign aside when in the scriptures it says you are to do that all the time? Now, I'm not against devotions, but I'm here to tell you, as a man of God, you should live a devotional life unto God so that then when you are with your children and your wife, you are devoting to them what you've gotten from God and pouring it into them. That's what you need to do. You need to talk about them when you're uh, walking along the road. Again, what is, your, what is your conversation, whether you're walking with them in the uh, 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 schools or you're walking with them in uh, uh, the streets, or are you doing this? You're not talking about the things of God. Oh, there it is. Hey, I was looking this way. <laughs> so, I like that. So... One of the things you have to do is you cannot be ashamed of who you are in God. Now, again, I'm not talking about having stickers on your cars, you know, carrying your Bible around. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about knowing who you are in God and standing on the word of God. And again, you don't have to say, you know what the Bible says? You don't have to do that. You just have to stay strong in your convictions. You know, every once in a while, as I have said before, I play golf, and every once in a while they have a kind of a, a blue joke, you know? They start talking, and they, hey, have you heard the one about, and they start saying a joke or something like that. And if it's off color, I just look at them. Oh, you must have heard that one. No, I just don't think that's funny. And it stops. I don't have to say, I'm holy. I can't hear these things. I don't... I don't <laughs> Okay. You know, uh, and, and